When it comes to transferring your assets or transferring your wealth or building the generational wealth, think about the transfer. Think about the angle. Think about the Rockefeller family. You got to do it like the Rockefellers. <laughs>
And that's what you want. You want to protect your wealth and you want to preserve it. And you want to do that by using a trust. What type of trust, right? There's hundreds of different types of trust. You have to choose the right one for you. But every single trust is going to end up in these two categories. It's either going to be a revocable trust or an irrevocable trust. I'm going to break it down for you really quick. So a revocable trust is where the grantor, which is the person who created the trust, the person who established the trust for their heirs, for their beneficiaries, for someone else. They didn't establish the trust for themselves, right? So the grantor has revocability where they can put an asset into the trust and then they can take it back. They can terminate the trust if they wanted to. They can make changes to the trust if they wanted to. They can remove their trustee. They can remove their beneficiaries. So that is what a revocable trust is. Because it can be changed by the person who created the trust, it's not seen as a fully protected trust because creditors can come after it. Like I told you, your student loan debt, default on it. And guess who's coming after it? Uncle Sam. So you don't want that to happen. So with a revocable trust, if it were to end in litigation where somebody sued your trust, what could happen is because it can be changed by the person who created it, the judge can decide to pierce through that trust, which means that they're going to force you to produce it in court which means that every single page, let's just say it's 100 pages, is now going to be a part of the public records. Everyone is going to be able to see every single page of your trust, the net worth of your trust, the beneficiaries of your trust, what's inside of it, all these things. You don't want that to happen. On the contrary, you have an irrevocable trust. An irrevocable trust is where the grantor has irrevocability. So that means that the person who established it cannot take back property or assets that they put into the trust. They cannot terminate the trust if they wanted to. They cannot remove the trustees or beneficiaries if they wanted to. They cannot make changes to the actual trust. Because the grantor can't do that, they have no power, no control, and no benefit. It's seen as a fully protected trust, which we call a bulletproof trust. And if it was to end up in litigation, one, the creditors cannot come after it, which is good. That's what you want. That's why you are protecting your assets. You don't want to be subject to foreclosures or bankruptcies or lawsuits, right? Or even probate. So it's fully protected. Another thing is that if it was to end up in court, the judge will not pierce through that, through that trust because it's an irrevocable trust. And so it's not going to end up in the public records and your trust is going to remain private, which is what you want. Instead of you being out here and using your personal name and your social security and all these things for all this stuff, you could start now using the trust entity, just like how you use your LLC. But the number one reason why you want to set up a trust is because it's going to protect your assets. And two, it's because of privacy. And you can build wealth with it. You can build wealth to the point that you're preserving it. So one thing that I um, always tell people is that your first asset inside of your trust, because you want to set up your estate to where it's sustaining itself. You don't want to be pouring in your W-2 income into the trust. You want to make sure that the trust acquires its own assets. Marvin's been talking about assets. The number one asset that you should put inside of your trust or that your trust should establish is an index universal life insurance policy. You got to do it like the Rockefellers. You have to do it like these families. The blueprint is already there for you. You just have to implement it. And so the trust is actually going to be the owner of your insurance policy, the payer of your insurance policy, and the beneficiary of your insurance policy. The trust is going to take out a policy on every single person associated with the trust. You are the trustee, so you are going to be insured. The beneficiaries are what we call human capital. They're human resources to the trust. The trust is a living entity, but it cannot operate itself. The trust is seen as a living, breathing person. 
It can do anything that you can do. So if you could buy a house, it could buy a house. If you could build credit, the trust could build credit. So because you are the trustee, which is the person who's operating the trust on a day-to-day -day basis, you want to make sure that you are insured. Because if anything were to happen to you, guess what? The trust just suffered a loss, a major loss. And the trust needs to be compensated. So that death benefit is going to go to the trust fund account and it's going to be replenished and actually aid in uh, preservation. Because a lot of us, we're so focused on building the wealth, we never even put anything in place to preserve the wealth. How are you going to preserve the wealth? The way that you preserve the wealth is through insurance. You have to insure everybody even the future generation, right? Your grandchildren's children, they're not even born yet, but guess what? As soon as they're born, the trust is gonna take out an insurance policy on them and pay into that policy. And then that makes them a trust fund baby. We need to normalize trust fund babies in our community. So now that trust fund baby is gonna grow up and instead of them going out and buying a house and getting a mortgage or buying a car and taking out a car note, what they can do is they can go to the trust and get that loan from the trust. And so the trustee is going to issue them a check for that house or that car. And if that trust, if that beneficiary decides to default on that loan, guess what? It becomes a risk-free loan because the trustee took it from their insurance policy. And because it's risk-free, that loan doesn't need to be paid back because they borrow against your cash value, which is amazing. And that's the position that you need to put yourself in. That is you actually building generational wealth. Not just because you got cash in the bank. That's not generational wealth. It's actually you setting up your estate and you listing your family, your children as the beneficiaries of that estate. That's true generational wealth. So you actually have to do it the right way. You can't be walking around here saying it and not actually walking the walk and talking the talk and doing the thing. That's exactly what you want to do. I recommend that you guys set up an irrevocable trust. You need to set up the bulletproof trust because that's what's going to preserve your wealth and protect your assets and maintain your privacy. The reason why when it comes to irrevocable trust, there's a lot of like, you know, confusion, right? A lot of people, they're like, oh, well, I'm going to lock myself out of the trust. The only thing that you have to do is you have to appoint someone else to be the grantor, okay? So you're going to have someone else be the creator on paper, and you're going to appoint yourself to be the trustee because the trustee has all the power, all the control. They're called the fiduciary, and they operate the trust for the beneficiaries. So that's the position that you want because you want to be able to control your assets. You might as well get the best type of trust. Instead of going for revocable, go for irrevocable.